The best place to get started with creating your first test in Apple Tools Eyes is to go to the Quick Start Guide from the Resources tab on the homepage of AppleTools.com. On this page, it has a series of steps on how to get started. Under step one, if you choose Selenium, the second step would be to select a programming language. We're going to go ahead with Java. And under step three, it lists the dependency that we need to grab for our Palm, XML, and Maven. So let's go ahead and grab that. And the test that we're going to add Apple Tools Eyes to is to exercise a simple login form on an open source web app called the internet. So if we jump into code here, we can see there's already an existing folder structure for Maven under the source test Java folder, there's a login test. And this is a simple Selenium test where in the setup, we're creating a new Firefox instance of Selenium. And then after a test, we quit it, we close the browser. So in the test, we're doing something very simple. We're just doing the minimum effort to exercise the login form with Selenium. So we visit the page, we find the username input field, and we type text of the username into it. We do the same thing again for the password, and then we find the submit button and click it. So let's go ahead and add visual validation checks to this test. So if we open our Palm XML, we have, under our dependency list here, we can go ahead and just paste in what we grabbed from the quick start guide. Um, alternatively, if you were writing a brand new test from scratch um, and didn't have Selenium listed as a dependency, um, the eyes Selenium Java SDK actually pulls in the latest version of Selenium Java for you. Um, but since we already have an existing Selenium test, it just saves us a step. So if we jump back over to our test, we can go ahead and start adding what we need to make this work for Apple's eyes. The first thing we want to do is create a field variable, much like we did for the driver instance. So we call eyes and specify field variable name. And we need to include, or rather import, the class for Apple Tools Eyes. And then in our setup, we need to make a couple of changes. The first one is we actually need to refer to the new Firefox instance as a browser object that's local. So we'll call just web driver browser. And I'll explain this in a second. The next thing we need to do is create an instance of Eyes. So new Eyes. After that, we have to specify our API key with set API key. And it's expecting a string value. And we can grab the string value back on the quick start guide. Under the next step here, step four at the top, it lists the API key. We just paste that in. And then the last thing we have to do is call eyes.open. So let's go ahead and call driver equals and then eyes.open. And with eyes.open, we have to specify a few things here. We have to pass in the Selenium instance of Firefox, so the browser variable. We need to specify the application name and then the test name, which could be a hard-coded string value, but I'll leave this empty string as a placeholder. I'm gonna come back and make that dynamic. And then we need to specify the viewport size. And this is an important point because without specifying the viewport size, we could potentially end up with inconsistent results um, as we run the test numerous times because we just basically be relying on what the actual size of the browser window is when the test is running. So by using the viewport size here, we're actually specifying the size that we want to use. And not just the full window size, we're actually specifying the inner viewport size, specifically the inner DOM rendering window, rather than what Selenium does when you call the manage window resizing, it actually is using the complete window size. And that can actually create inconsistent results as well, because across operating systems in different browsers, there could be different widths for things, as well as third-party toolbar add-ons, which can cause uh, transient test failures by unfortunately and inadvertently resizing the viewport window. So by using the viewport size here, we mitigate all of those issues. And also if you're dealing with responsive website design, then this is also an important point as well, because you wanna make sure that you get the consistent rendering that you want for the web app. And if you want to test other rendering uh, layouts, then you wanna be able to specify different viewport sizes, which you can do with this approach by then also adding in parameterized testing, which we'll cover in a future video. So to specify the viewport size here, call new rectangle size, and then specify a width and a height. So we'll go ahead and use a very common one, which is 1,000 by 600. And this puts us in the ballpark of a 1024 by 768 window resolution. So then we'll go ahead and address the test name. So we're going to want to actually store the test name as a field variable. So we'll go ahead and create a string field variable. And then we'll rely on JUnit's uh, test watcher rule. So we have to call a rule for the test watcher. And we we'll want to use the starting method within it, which gives us access to the test name uh, as the test is starting, each test. 
So we say test name equals description dot get display name. And then we can hop up here and replace this hard coded string with the field variable of test name. So now we're ready to jump down to our test and add in some check windows to make sure that we can grab the snapshots we want for our test for visual assertions. And so after navigating to the page, we want to perform a check window. And what this does is capture the screenshot from the viewport uh, that we will then use for, uh, to establish a baseline image. And then for future test runs, use this check window to compare to the original baseline image. And so we can specify nothing or some helpful metadata. So we'll just say login form. And then after logging in, we want to call check window again to make sure that the page is rendered correctly after logging in. And for this, we can just say logged in. And then we want to call eyes.close. And eyes.close is responsible for performing the visual assertion check, um, where it takes these check window images and then compares them to the baseline. And then if for some reason eyes.close is not able to be called, we want to make sure that in our teardown, we account for this by calling eyes.abortifnotclosed before we call gyro.quit. So now we can go ahead and run our test. And the first time the test runs, it will fail. And in the failure output here on the console, it'll have a URL to the job in Apple's eyes. And the reason it's failing is because there's no established baseline for this test. And so there's two options here. We can either go to this uh, job dashboard uh, for the specific job and accept it or reject it as the new baseline. Or we can just assume that the page is in the correct state and rerun the test and it will automatically make what it sees as the baseline. So let's go ahead and do that. So now the test is passing. So let's go ahead and introduce a failure to demonstrate what Apple Tools Eyes would see if something was not rendered correctly on the page. We'll do that with a wee bit of JavaScript right here. We run our test. So now we see there's a failure. And we'll go ahead and jump to the jobs dashboard. We can actually see it here in the main dashboard window. We can see both the original tests, the ones that passed, the first one when it was new, and then the failed one. And then if we actually look and view the batch for this specific job, we can see the thumbnails for each step of the job. And we can see that the first step was passed because of the green mark at the top left here. And then the second one failed. So something has vanished from uh, the actual logged in page. And so if we clicked on this, it would take us to the job dashboard, which is this. And on this page, what we can do is actually see what the comparison is um, by disabling the diff and then clicking on this button here, we can toggle between the baseline image. And if you press the letter T, then you can actually just do that from the keyboard. And so we can see that the baseline image has this green notification message at the top with a check. And instead it's actually got an X and the color is red. So there was actually no locator changes to the page, but um, the actual rendering of the page was different. And as a result, Apple Tools Eyes caught this. So what we want to do now is either approve or reject this. So we want to go ahead and reject this by clicking the thumbs down and then saving. 